My name is Terry Pickford. I'm regional coordinator of the Northwest Raptor Group. Um, today we're looking at three peregrine sites, two outside the forest of Boland, which have been successful again this year, one that's not been successful. The one we're at today overlooks the forest of Boland, about five miles away, and this uh, site has fledged three chicks recently. And it's a quite an interesting site, because as you can see today, it's uh, quiet, there's no one about, but this is a public car park area for people from all over West Lancashire to come and have a look. Um, this site's had its problems, but not with gamekeepers, but with, uh, believe it or not, Raven. Uh, originally, the uh, female was quite a young bird, inexperienced, and she had a lot of problems trying to hatch her eggs. The raven would come into the nest and take the eggs and eat them. Unfortunately, the male that was servicing that particular female was killed by a car on the road while he was chasing a teal, and he was killed. And the uh, male was replaced by a second uh, male bird. He took over, and now he's, he's looking after the female. He's mature now, it's about four years ago. And they've had young ever since. Um, there used to be watchers on here to stop pigeon fanciers coming in. But now you see, there's no watchers at all. It's quiet. The male birds are sat up there with the female and the chicks are flying over. We've seen them passing food. It's been a remarkable experience this year here. And again, we want to emphasize the difference between peregrine sites just outside the forest of Boland and those within. There's no gamekeepers here, so they're successful. And there's no watch, there's no protection. So it's obvious what's happening in the forest of Boland. They're certainly being persecuted and the nest destroyed. And if this doesn't tell everybody what's going on, then nothing ever will. Um, we had a, a comment on Raptor Politics in the week following the first uh, video that we posted in the week. And the guy was saying something like, you know, what are you bothering about peregrines in the countryside away from Boland? He said, there's plenty. But that's the point we're trying to make. There are plenty. Yes, there are plenty. And they're doing very well. They don't need any protection. They're away from the source of persecution, i.e. gamekeepers. It tells everything. So that's what I've got to say here. We're going to move on to the second site in a few moments and let you have a look at that one. It's completely different. It's a quarry site, yes, but it's massive, and they've been successful for about 15 years raising peregrines. So, we've got a good panoramic view now. I'll move out of camera and let you just have a look at that. Uh, we've been watching the female bring in the kills and dropping them on the floor of the quarry, and the young birds have been going down onto the quarry bottom and uh, eating them. It's quite a remarkable spot. The quarry itself is about 100 and 200 feet high. It's uh, limestone. It's not a common nesting site for limestone. They usually don't like limestone. It's very wet, but here they've been very, very successful. I think the birds here will disappear within the next month or so, and then they'll make their own way. I hope they don't go into the forest of Boland because they won't last very long. The whole situation there has dramatically changed now. I don't think there's any chance now of any more peregrines uh, recolonizing. I've just arrived at the second peregrine site. Um, it's late July and uh, the, the birds have fledged and they've gone, which is quite natural. And as you can see, it's a fantastic quarry. And uh, this quarry is usually successful every year. We do have climbing issues here, but it's very rare that the climbers uh, sort of clash with the peregrines. Uh, I've been coming here for about 15 years and uh, it very rarely fails. But um, it's a fantastic site. It's something where I've never absolutely abseil to a nest you don't need to do because they're so safe so what we're going to do now because obviously the birds have left the site we're going to go to a third site that's possibly got peregrines and hopefully they'll still be there the later you leave it in the season like we have done now the birds just just move i just hope they don't go into the Boland forest where they won't be accepted 
I mean, we've got about, I think we're up to about 13 birds now that have fledged this year from uh, quarries and nesting sites in this area. It's very good. I'm, I'm very pleased this year about this, but again, it just shows you there's something wrong, something wrong in the forest of Bolden. And the only problem is, is the, the persecution. So we'll go to the third site and have a look there. Okay. Well, here we are at the third site this morning. A bit windy, not able to pick all what I'm saying. I'm quite close. As you can see, this is a very, very large quarry, similar to number two. Uh, at the moment, we've got the, uh, the male, the tearsel peregrine, sat over on the rocks. He's about half a mile away, obviously. We can't pick him up from here. And uh, there are actually two chicks this year at this quarry. Um, it's been very successful, very successful over the last 10 years and it shares the nesting site with a pair of ravens that have got their nest on the left hand side up there. Um, it's uh, again made of limestone, um, usually pyramids don't prefer limestone but they've taken up residence here because it's a vacant site and the um, predominant food here is waders and pigeons. They sometimes fly across to the forest of Bowl actually land there and come back here so hopefully these birds will continue to flourish so what we're going to do uh, we're going to try and move to another spot further along we're going to try and capture the male and he's sat on the rock just over there and then we're going to try and catch the uh, the chicks feeding on a pigeon so bear with us and then after that we're going to go to the last site number four
we're at site number four now. This is a very interesting situation here because we've kept this site quiet, we've kept it ultra secret. This site is actually in the forest of Boland and at the beginning of the year peregrines here laid eggs in the nest on the crag over there. I've been monitoring this site for 25 years on and off. It's had a chequered history. Eggs have disappeared, adult birds have disappeared. It's, it's one of those things that you can't put your finger on it. Things have just gone haywire. But the problem is, in 2010, the Northwest Rapture Group, I'm the chairman, Natural England removed our licenses because we were telling too much of the truth, telling people what was happening in Boland and it was upsetting the landowners. And Natural England, whether we like it or not, were taking the side of the landowners. So they withheld our licenses because we were embarrassing too many people, thinking that we wouldn't be able to tell any more information because we can't get to the nest. We didn't need a license for the nest. We can do it from a distance. And this is one of those sites. Anyway, last year I applied for a license to monitor this site 24 seven with other members of the Northwest Rapture Group. Six months later, I had a reply from the BTO on behalf of Natural England. They'd refused to issue a license and they'd issued it to a third party, irrespective that I had permission to monitor the birds off the landowner for this site. And the third party that they gave the license to had never monitored peregrines. He'd never had a license, he'd no experience. So consequently, what unfolded was not only illegal, it was tragic. We weren't allowed to come in the quarry because we didn't have a license. Cutting a long story short, as you can see here, the quarry started to excavate during the breeding season when the pair of peregrines were sitting on eggs. We don't know how many, but we saw the bird going in to incubate and we saw food passes, so we know that she was sitting on eggs. And all this work, at a critical period, caused the peregrines to desert the nest and their eggs. And that was illegal, because the quarry owner knew that the peregrines were here and said that he was monitoring them as well. He appreciated the birds. But doing this, nearly 700 tonnes of material and dumping it right underneath the nest during April and May, it was wrong. It was wrong. So we got a situation where we had two nesting attempts in Boland this year, one on the United Utilities estate, which failed after someone went to put a camera on the nest and spent two hours doing so, the birds deserted. And this site, the quarry owner starts dumping hundreds of tons of spoil underneath the nest. So we lost both sites and we couldn't have a license. We couldn't do anything about it. But the curious thing about all this the person that they'd got the license, that had given the license, was sat over there many days watching this nesting pair. Either didn't know what was going on, and he certainly didn't alert the quarry owners to what he was doing was illegal. Couldn't do anything about it. We hadn't got a license. So I'm afraid that, that really is the end of the season, and it's a tragic end. What is going to happen? But you've seen all the nests over there on that side of West Lancashire, just outside this boundary all doing well, all fledging young. So for now, I'm going to say thank you for following me on Facebook and I hope you'll continue to do so and please put some comments on, criticise what's been going on, not only here at this site, but in the Forest of Boland as well. Nobody's doing anything about it. Terry Pickford signing out for this year. Thank you.